All right, welcome back everybody. Um, had a couple of days off uh, due to a bit of a cold, uh, feeling a bit better, got a bit of time. Let's get cracking on with Project B and uh, yes, try and just get set up so we can maybe try and do some drawing by the next uh, project. So, where we left off in the last assignment, so if I have a look at my elevations uh, on a north um, elevation, say for example, this is what happened last time. So we had set up our topo surface with uh, levels at uh, 100 meters because that's what the survey had given us. Um, but when we look at elevation, we can see down here at the bottom of the screen that our levels, when we zoom in, they're only stuck at about 3 meters. So we need to um, resolve this so that we can um, yeah, Proceed with a you know a lot more accuracy. Okay, so there's there's a couple of ways we can do this. Okay, we could be um, extremely inaccurate about the way we do things, and we could just like find a level like that. And say so, I click on level. You see my little if I hover over it, I get my little cross move bar there, my drag bar, and I could just physically hold my left key down and drag it up. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Okay, I'm going to control Z that. And um, just, you know, like I said, it can be done that way. I, I'm not a big fan of doing things sort of ad hoc like that though. Okay, so the alternative is to have a look at our ground floor plan. Okay, eyeball some of these sites, some of these levels. Okay, and make an informed decision of roughly where these levels have got to go. So, um, so we've got here, you know, 100.1 on this side, on the left hand side, and we've got an average of 100.6 on that side. Um, you know, we're probably going to be trying to site our, our house in the middle here at this stage. So, um, you know, I'm guessing at this stage, um, you know, if we set a ground floor RL of around about 100.3, I think we'll be okay. So, um, with that number in mind, 100.3, uh, let's give this a crack here. So, there's our ground floor level. So, at the moment, we're sitting at 300 millimeters. Remember, 100.3 millimeters is going to translate into 100,300 millimeters. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click out of there or go enter, and it disappears, sort of. But if I zoom in here, there we go. And there we go. I can see my RL there, and that's sitting reasonably okay at this stage. So that's, you know, it's a bit of a refresher from our original project. You just type in a number in the levels, and those levels go up and down. Now, what I could do with this one, with the ceiling level, now I think I'll be, I can be a bit lazy and drag it up. Okay. So I've sort of contradicted myself a little bit, but that's... I'm my video that's <laughs> yeah I'm gonna you know my uh, former students will attest that you know I do change my mind occasionally um, because every job is different and uh, we just we review things differently as we go along okay so I dragged the ceiling level up so like I said I, pr I highlighted it there um, use my drag tool there and things like that. Now you can see as I'm dragging next to the drag icon you'll see a light blue dashed line. Okay and that's Revit's way of saying that the drag motion of where you're moving things is in sync or you know is aligned um, with um, you know the its origin points. So it's a nice way of knowing that you're you're, you're moving stuff in the right direction. Okay, so um, so we've got a couple of ways here. So we've got the ceiling level. We've got a ground floor now sitting at one hundred thousand point, yeah, three hundred millimeters. 
um, we need our ceiling level to be 13, you know, 2.7. So what I can do here is I can use this wonderful thing here called a temporary dimension. Whoops, it's disappeared. So let's start that again. So click on this level. This is the level that I want to move, so I have to click on it. Okay, and in here we have what's called a temporary dimension. Okay, and at the moment it says 6,000. So I can actually t click on this number here, instead of trying to calculate a whole bunch of numbers over here, I can just take this number here and I can go, so for argument's sake, 2,000, 2,750, hit enter, and there we go. I'll undo that and I'll show you what happens if we try it with the ground floor. So if I click on the ground floor level, I still get my temporary dimension there. And if I change that number again to the 2750, the ground floor moves, which is wrong because it's now it's sitting, you know, about three meters above the ground. So completely wrong. So control Z, undo that. Click on my ceiling level. 2750, enter. And done. Okay, so now if I double middle, if I with my middle mouse button, double click rapidly. Okay, which is the effect of zoom all. Um, we'll see now that our drawing has zeroed in on everything. Okay, so it's going to make life a little bit easier for us now. Okay, so we're just going to do a quick wrap around of all these elevations. So I'm going to have a quick look on the east. Okay. East, we've got this little section bar here, so we won't stress about that. So if I want to do, I can delete that. So just to, to delete something in Revit, you click on it. You can either hit the delete button or you can type in DE. DE with sections, I just want you to confirm um, that you want to delete them. At the moment, I'm just going to say yes. We will create more um, sections as we go along. Again, double double click of the middle mouse button to zoom all. Um, uh, the the short key for that is ZA. So that's our east elevation. Uh, north, I think we've already had a look at. South. Uh, west. There we go. And a quick look in 3D. Just so I'm happy with everything. Okay, so we can see here that we've got our topo surface, and if I click out here, there's our survey file. So this is the 2D CAD file that we brought in. Okay, and as you can see, there is some degree of, at the lower end, we've got a CAD file sitting up, but down this side here, we've got the CAD file sitting under. Okay, and that's where our ground floor level is currently sitting, because the CAD file is tied to it. Okay, and that's going to that's be quite handy when we start putting in things like building pads down and we can show you how Revit does cut and fill later on okay so it's going to be very very handy in that regards okay but for the time being I'm just going to go into the ground floor plan okay zoom in we'll call it quits there so it's a fairly short video just showing you how to correct uh, levels based on where a topo surface is so at least you can start thinking about, you know, where levels got to be for a, for a design, etc. Okay. In the next video, we are going to look at um, setting up some setback lines uh, for the building envelope. Okay. So it's about project siting. Okay. And there's um there's a couple there's a few little options available to us, but there's only one that's going to really th sing out for us. Okay, and that's called using reference planes, but um, that is for the next lesson, so we will catch you then.